Hey, this is Jack, and this video is called Three Powerful Strategies to Find the Right Man. Hey, welcome to the channel. If you're new or you haven't subscribed here, I'd love to invite you to subscribe to the channel. Just click the button and then tap that bell notification so you hear of new videos as soon as they come out. My name is Jack Butler. I'm a relationship coach and I release at least two new videos every week. And if you haven't taken my free webinar, I wanna invite you to do that. It's called The Three Keys to Being Relationship Ready, How to Keep and Attract the Right Man. And you can just find it. It's the first link beneath this video. You can click that link and find a time that works for you in your time zone. And uh, it's been getting rave reviews. I think you'll be some of the best investment of 90 minutes of your time. We'd love to have you there. So just click that link and find a time that works for you and we'll see you on the webinar. All right, so let's get into it. So what are these three powerful strategies to help you find the right man? So the first powerful strategy is to be putting yourself in the right environments. Let's just make this really simple. Are you putting yourself in environments regularly, routinely, where you're having the experience of meeting men that you're at least interested in, right? Maybe you're interested in the men that walk their dog in the dog park, right? Maybe you're interested in men that are part of a hiking group on a Saturday morning. Maybe you're interested in the guy who works on his laptop in the coffee shop. Maybe you're interested in the kind of guys that go to seminars on their weekends. Maybe you're interested in the kind of guys that go to bars or go to yoga or go to meditation or go to knitting, whatever it is, how regularly are you putting yourself in the environment where the kind of guys that you're rubbing shoulders with, that you're smiling with, that you're saying hello to are occasionally the kind of guys that you wanna deepen a connection with, right? In some ways you can think of dating a bit like a marketing game, right? How many new prospects are coming into your field? How often is it that you meet someone that you're at least interested in? Doesn't mean it needs to go anywhere. It doesn't mean it even needs to, to become a date, but there's at least some sense in terms of worldview, in terms of uh, values, lifestyle, the things that might be important to you, that you're, you're in the arena to meet the kinds of people that you may wanna date and have a relationship with. Said differently, if you're never doing that, it's really hard for you to be successful in your dating, right? If you're mostly staying at home or if you're mostly on online websites and it's just not really working for you, how can you physically and regularly put yourself in an environment where you might meet new types of men that are of interest to you. And if you don't know what that environment is, give yourself permission to learn and permission to fail, right? And that means that you get the right to go out and experiment and say, okay, cool, I'm gonna join this new meetup group. Okay, cool, I'm gonna do something different on a Saturday morning. Okay, I have been walking my dog, but I've, I've never walked my dog in a social way. I am gonna start walking my dog at the dog park and I'm gonna make a point of saying hello to people, right? Or maybe you do the school run and actually you could go five minutes earlier and hang outside school and start talking to people whatever it is that allows you just to increase the amount of contact and likelihood that you're meeting the right places. Like I grew up playing a lot of football, soccer. And I remember there was this guy called Ian Rush who was one of the best footballers of like the 80s and maybe early 90s. And you know, people would ask him what his secret is. You know, how come you're always in the right place at the right time? And he would point out that most of the time he would be making runs into the penalty box and nothing would happen, right? So, so many times he was in the wrong place at the right time or he was in the right place at the wrong time. But if you keep doing that, sometimes you're gonna be in the right place at the right time. And that's exactly what this strategy is about. It's just putting yourself out there into the arena and then letting life work its magic. We don't know where the right connection is gonna come from, but if you're sat at home on the sofa, we can guarantee that it's less likely to come to you, right? It's unlikely that you're gonna meet the guy of your dreams inside your two bedroom flat on your sofa when you're the only person that you live with, right? So as simple as that may sound, I've experienced this in dating a lot of people that the, there are a lot of barriers to putting yourself out into the right environments, right? There are a lot of barriers around fear, doubt, worthiness, and you know, these are the things that you don't have to solve them before putting yourself out there. You can solve them in the process of putting yourself out there, right? You can solve them by actually getting out into these environments and noticing, yeah, my fear and my doubt is here and I am gonna smile at this person or I am just gonna say hello or I am gonna invite a conversation or I am gonna let this guy take me on a date. I don't know how interested I am, but I'm just gonna keep putting myself out there into the environment and into the energy. All right, the second powerful strategy that you can adopt if you wanna meet the right man, you wanna meet the right guy, is actually a strategy of trusting yourself. 
Now, what does that mean to trust yourself? Trusting yourself is that you'll know when you've met the right guy and that everything else is noise. Everything else in, in the context of actually deepening with the right guy, everything else is some kind of distraction, right? Now, why is this important? It's, be it's because it allows you to focus your time, energy, and effort, which are your most precious resources, into something that actually matters and has a potential to go somewhere. So often, what I experience as a coach is women investing a lot of time in things that they know in their hearts of hearts, if they really trusted themselves and dialed in their intuition and listened deeply to themselves, they kind of know this guy, it's not going anywhere, right? They know that the guy that's been breadcrumbing them, they need to cut things off with, right? They know that the guy that they've been dating for three years and he's in no way deepening the connection or commitment is probably not the guy for them. And yet maybe they're in love, maybe you know, you, we want something that's not there and so you're hoping. And all of these are superhuman. None of, none of this is me making that wrong. It's just saying, wow, you, you're a precious person. And to be in relationship with you over the long term is a precious opportunity for the right man. So we want to preserve that opportunity and we want to clear your field of everything that isn't that. Right? You sometimes have probably heard people talk about life as a vibration. And it's not really a language I use that much, but in this instance, I think it can be quite powerful that if you want to vibrate with someone, if you want to invite the thing that you really want, you have to take the, quote, lower vibration stuff away from your life. You don't need to do it meanly. You can be kind and compassionate, and you learn how to hold your boundary and say, hey, it's been great connecting with you, and there's something that I'm really looking for, and I'm really going to save myself for the right connection. Now, doesn't mean that you can't go on dates. Doesn't mean that you can't keep some kind of... Um, you know, if you're starved of connection or you're starved of physical touch, there's many ways that you can go and meet those needs even while in your heart you're preserving that space for the right man to walk into your life and to want to stake out that territory and be in that territory with you, right? So trusting yourself is you'll know if a guy is worth waiting for. You'll know if a guy is worth continuing a connection with. You'll know when actually the way you're being treated or the way that he's showing up or the way that he's not offering commitment just isn't what you want. And if you're in love with someone, it's difficult to hold that boundary. But it's so much better to be in the reality of something that can go somewhere than the false hope of one day this will change, one day it'll be different, one day he'll invest, one day he'll initiate. And if that's not really available, that's, that's just false hope. Do you know what's better than false hope? Is, is what we call you know, in the, in the literature, they call it holy hope, which is kind of like a grand idea. But it's actually the being present enough in your life to notice that things do get better over time. To be present enough to notice that things do get better, that life conspires in your, in your favor is one way to think of that. And that that's so much better than the false hope of, you know, expectation, disappointment, expectation, disappointment. Or the only way that I can be in my life is to ongoingly have a hope that one day... This guy will show up in a way that he never has. That is so detrimental to your sense of trusting yourself in life because there's a huge cognitive dissonance there, right? There's a dissonance, there's a disconnect between one day something having to change with this guy and you trusting yourself and the things that you know to actually be true. So powerful strategy number two is, is trust yourself. Maybe you've been with a guy for six months and you don't know. Okay, that's, that's cool. That's called I don't yet know. Right? It's not called, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. That's called doubt. I don't yet know is I'm open to receiving my knowing. Life, show me whether you want me to have a knowing about this guy. And if you don't, and we've been together for long enough and I still don't know, I might just say that not knowing is then its own answer. But until that point, I'm going to remain in curiosity. I don't yet know. If you could do one thing in your life and just take all the times that you say, I don't know. I know this as a coach. So many times people are saying, I don't know. They don't even realize they're saying it. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, don't, I mean, I've seen this guy. I don't know. I, I, don't know what I, I don't really know what I feel about him. If you could just nix that, cut that from your vocabulary and just replace it with, I don't yet know. Because it also forces you to get closer to the truth, right? Doubt that you spin in isn't usually the truth. The truth might be, I don't yet know and I want to know. I want to have a knowing about the right guy. Life, could you support me to have a knowing about the right guy? Life, could you support me to have the courage to take myself out of any connection that isn't actually the right guy for me to be in connection with? 
And could you support me in my times of loneliness and in my times of doubt and my times of anxiety that actually the right guy will come in my life? Do you start to see how there's such an inner game to, to dating and relationships? Because that way that you hold the things that are coming into your life, the way that you can trust or not trust the things that come into your life, the more you cultivate that trust, the more you're gonna have the experience that you and life are aligned, that life is on your side, that life is working for you. And that the, 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 you know, you've probably heard this expression, God's delays are not God's denials. And whether you believe in God or not, or whatever your spiritual experience is, it means that having patience, that the right thing can come into your life at the right time is important. We don't know if that's next week, next month, or next year, or next decade. And it can be really difficult if you're longing and life isn't meeting you yet. But it's so much better to preserve that energy for the right thing than try and take the wrong thing, the wrong guy, and make them into something that they're never actually gonna be. That's called false hope. And let's have you dealing in real hope, which is actually much more about surrender and letting life work its magic over a period of time. And by the way, if relationship is your area of struggle, I feel for you and I can relate to that. It's here to teach you, right? For some people, relationship isn't their area of struggle, right? Maybe they settle down in their 20s and they're still with that person in, in later life. That's awesome, you know, hats off to that. That's awesome. And it might not be your path. Your path might be relationship is going to teach me some things. Through the pain and wounding and longing of relationship, I'm going to learn how to come more into my own power and wholeness. What an opportunity that is, right? So anytime you're struggling with this, you're like, well, I've been so patient. I've been so patient. A couple of questions for you. One is, yeah, you don't get to decide the timelines of your patience. What if you could just relax and trust that life will sort out things in its own timeline? And two, how patient have you really been? Because sometimes what people call patience is actually habitual impatience, just they haven't gotten the results that they're attached to. But if I was on the inside of your experience, I'd be like, oh, you don't seem that patient to me right now. You actually seem frustrated, wound up, untrusting and impatient and hard on yourself. That's where this can come back to your own inner work. Notice if you're actually patient, right? You know what it's like to be in a line or in a queue and feel patient versus, yeah, actually, I really don't want to be here right now. So how patient are you being with your real process? Because patience and trust um, are good bedfellows. All right, the third thing, the third powerful strategy that you can adopt is actually to be rooted in your own authenticity. What I mean by that is you are unique, you are authentically unique. And so you uh, finding the right guy in large part at a certain level of development, right? This wouldn't have been true 200 years ago, but in the context that you and I, a lot of us find ourselves in where we actually have a right to our own authenticity in a way that we didn't historically, where our survival isn't so dependent upon the herd in quite the same way. We actually have a right to our own self-authoring, a right to our own self-expression, a right to our autonomy. If those things are true, then it means that the right guy is likely to be attracted to what? He's likely to be attracted to your authenticity, to the, the unique vibration that's you, the unique vibration in all time. The unique vibration in all time that is you. So what would it be like combining points two and three if you could trust deeply and patiently that the right guy will show up in your life in right timing when you're fully being yourself? That the right guy doesn't need you to create some song and dance for him that the right guy will love the signature flavor, essence, vibration, sound, look, feel, texture that is you when you're really being yourself. What would it be like to trust that? What would it be like to know that you can relax on the timing, that you can relax on having to figure it out because actually there's a knowingness that can come through you when you trust yourself and that you are yourself. And that that is a much higher level dating strategy than the vast majority of tips, tricks, tactics, and gimmicks that people are teaching about do this, say that, which mostly, what do they do? They take you away from yourself. If I tell you, hey, say this, say this, say this, say that, I'm really teaching you how to be a version of me. And what might be so much more powerful in your own dating is for you to be the true and real version of you, not even the best version of you, right? Because the best version of you is predicated upon a belief that you've, you've kind of got to constantly improve, right? That somehow there's this like best version of you that can come out and that you can keep tending to. I don't think at a certain level of development that's as worthy an aim 
as being the more authentic you. And the authentic you might look so different in so many different situations that life will call forth your authenticity and that your job is to respond to that. That it will include your sadness, your grace, your beauty, your frailty, your vulnerability. All of those things don't tend to get captured in this notion of being the best version of you. That's why it might be better to aim at being the more authentic or true. I don't even know why I'm doing this because this, this is not a quotes thing. This is just the real, authentic, true version of you. And it's not really even a version. It's actually for most of us a deeper underlying presence or potential that can come through you. So the more you allow yourself to rely on that, the more the right guy can, can fall into your life. I've coached with people and they're saying, well, you know, this guy has so much money, he can just have the pick of the dating world. You know, where, where that might be true in certain contexts and in certain levels of development. At higher levels of development, money doesn't buy soul, right? Money doesn't buy authenticity. And for you to have a real and authentic connection at a soul level with the right guy, which if you watch my channel or you're still in this video right now and you're watching, you're probably the kind of person that wants a deep soul, authentic connection, right? Because that's really the, that's the crucible that these teachings are coming from, that these ideas are coming from. So if that's you, what would it be like to know in your heart of hearts that you being yourself is not just good enough, that it is the best strategy towards attracting and finding the right guy. Because then the right guy can be magnetized, attracted, drawn to something that's real, not something that you've got to put on every day as some kind of performance that's hard work, that is actually okay to be you in the connection. I think that's probably what most of you want. So three things, trust yourself, root yourself in your own authenticity, be the authentic you, and that's not like a challenge that you can't rise to, you don't have to be the most authentic you today. That's a journey for all of us ongoing. And keep putting yourself in the right environments. There's no substitute for getting out there and maximizing the chances of coming across the right kind of guy. So as always, questions and comments below this video. If you haven't, please subscribe to the channel. Click that link below this video, take my free webinar. It'll be a great investment of your time. And as always, thanks for being here. I'm Jack.